would hit him. Nuclear launch detected. You call down the thunder. Now reap the whirlwind. Hello and welcome back to the SSC AIT tournament. Round of 16 part as you can see from the little intro and the graphics that are on the screen at the moment, I'm trying to do something a little bit different. This is Nightcap. This is my first cast for the SSC AIT, and I do thank them for the opportunity uh, to come in and cast for them. Uh, so what I'm trying here is I'm going to cast the rest of the round of 16 using uh, StarCraft Remastered to actually watch the replays. Uh, if there is any sort of desync that happens from doing this, then I'll switch over to casting that particular game in OpenBW. However, uh, from testing that I've done, it appears that Blizzard has fixed issues that plagued watching bot replays in Remast. Hopefully, we'll be able to have the entirety of the round of, or well, the rest of the round of 16, rather, in Remast. So to kick things off, we have game one of Purple Wave versus Tier Protoss. So let's go ahead and get it underway here. So we have Purple Wave in the top left and Tier Protoss down on the uh, bottom right, Yellow Protoss. Got a little bit of PvP going on here. Both starting off with their pylons. Purple Wave getting theirs down a little bit sooner. Going with a Gateway. Gas yet. And looks like Tyr with the Cross Scout's gonna find Purple Wave first, getting his gas up, that's good. Looks like he's gonna open up Cyber while Tyr is going Double Gateway. So it looks like we might be seeing some early Zealot action maybe from Tyr, although Tyr is building up forces. Looks like he's going for a quick expand. Probably well, we decided to do that after scouting the Cybernetics Core from Purple Wave. Still not getting any Zealots. I'm going for Cyber Core itself. So it looks like it may have scouted what Purple Wave was doing and is changing its strategy. Purple Wave currently blocking its own probe from doing what? While the scout lives on for Purple Wave within tier base. He's that he switched to get the cyber core, now getting a third gate. It looks like there's a little bit of a problem up there for Purple Wave, blocking his probes from going out. Up there we go, one got out and got the pylon built. So that might have been a little bit of a hook point issue there for Purple Wave, especially with the buildup of resources that might have been. Dragoon out now for Tyr, and Purple Wave is coming out to see what's going on there. And now we've got a cannon going down. Looks like we've got some Dark Templar action about to happen here. Yep, there's two Dark Templar about to pop. Does Tyr have any detection? I don't see any, so this is probably not going to go well for Tyr. Nexus going down behind the in, in the natural behind the Dark Templars, which are now pushing forward. And coming up, and this is going to be disastrous. Let's see what that is. That's just another gateway. Yep, and here are the Dark Templar. And they are going to clean this up. There's not even a forge down for Tier Boss. So this is just not going to go well. This, the probes are just getting slaughtered here. Oof. And the army's trying to engage the two dragoons here, which I think are two of the original dragoons. It's a kill count on this one here. Um, but just check the uh, 21 kill Dark Templar, 19 kill Dark Templar. Yeah, that natural is going down.
Immolator is down. Oh, there are two cannons now, though. So Tyr did react with a forge. And it's going down, but it's lost the natural. It has no army. Looks like it lost the majority of its probes in the natural. And so it's looking like this is just going to end up by Purple Wave. He is just continuing to get some gateways uh, so that it can macro off of two bases. And there's the GG from Tier Protoss. So that is game one with Purple Wave taking it with Dark Templar opening. Now, something kind of nice with uh, doing this with... Oh, I hope I did not have that played the whole time, the replay progress. I will be more conscious of that if not. Uh, but something that will be... Uh, can do nicely here is go ahead and exit the replay and actually see the stat screen since this is running in remaster. Um, probably won't spend too much time here, but we'll show it off very quickly at the end. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, and on to game two. Now, unfortunately, this game does desync in uh, remaster, so perhaps not all of the issues fixed as I was thinking. Um, now, even human replays can desync sometimes, uh, though pretty rarely, so we'll see if this happened with the rest of it. Uh, so we're back in the open BW replay viewer, uh, where we have Purple Wave, uh, Game 2 of Purple Wave and Tier Protoss. The purple wave being red Protoss down in the bottom right, and tear Protoss being uh, orange Protoss in the top right. And this one is on Circuit Breaker. I forgot to mention that the first match was on Fighting So, I don't quite remember all of the shortcuts for the Open BW viewer, so I do apologize. Uh, Opening, there we go. And we can have the production tab up here. Uh, so we've got another two gateway opener coming from Tier Protoss here. And uh, Purple Wave having scouted Tier Protoss first. So Tier Protoss looks like he's going to discover Purple Wave now down here in the bottom right. Purple Wave going for Gateway Core again. And Zealot. Tier Protoss getting. Two more zealots already has one. Looks like he's chasing around that scout uh, instead of being aggressive. And purple wave is now throwing down a second gateway and got the scout thing. Purple wave is home, starting that ramp. Tier Protoss is expanding instead of being aggressive with the two gateway build, which seems just fine in this case. Uh, Purple Wave, seeing what Tier Protoss was doing, quickly got a second gateway, went up to four zealots, um, would have been able to defend a pre especially with the defender's advantage. Uh, getting a Cybercore and another gateway. And another gateway, so Tier is going to be going up to four gateways. Five gateways, it looks like. Uh, Dragoon's starting to come out for both of them now. Purple Wave's still on one base. Probe transfer happening here. here. Forge down for Purple Wave here, and Purple Wave Going to take the natural and see what tier is up to. Here, continuing to his forge is completing, continuing to get the means off his five gateways. A little engagement happening here. Here, able to easily defend and actually has a greater doom count than Purple Wave at the moment. So we've got reinforcements arriving for Purple Wave. A tears looking in a pretty protected state here. Citadel just finishing up for tears. So I wonder if we'll see some legs or if we'll see 
of the Templar play coming, and it looks like with the Templar archives going down that we are indeed going to see some Templar move here. Question is, will it be Dark Templar or High Templar? Purple Wave does have cannons back at home, so should be protected at least there from the Dark Templar, but I don't see any Robo or any other tech from Purple Wave at the moment. They might have some issues with protection, at least in trying to be aggressive and containing to Another gateway going down for Tyr, increasing that ability to produce the army. We'd have the first Dark Templar out for Tyr. And it looks like Tyr is going to try and be with this Dark Templar, sneaking it right past the army of Purple Wave. Going around the long way. Might be checking to see if there's any um, hidden expansion shenanigans. Meanwhile, there is a third for Purple Wave going down in the bottom left, it looks like. We got a cannon, a couple cannons, and some macro buildings, it looks like, going down. There's a robo facility about to finish up for Purple Wave. Meanwhile, Tier Protoss is moving out and pushing Purple Wave's armies back. Just with it looks like the significant numbers that he has off of his five or six gateways that he was pumping units from, pushing him all the way back into Purple Wave's natural. But with the two cannons, will it be enough to hold Tier back? The goons are dropping quickly, blue boot everywhere. Let's see. And the Dragoons, though, are kind of tripping over themselves here. They've, he's got a nice spot here where he could defend, but that cannon is now unpowered and not contributing to the fight, just kind of getting in Purple Wave's way, really. I think Purple Wave might have taken out his own cannon there, um, just to get it out of the way. It's hard to tell where those shots came from. But the, just the Dragoon count here is just too high. I don't know if Purple Wave is going to be able to push this back. Looks like the Zealots coming in from the bottom left base through scattered those Dragoons a little bit, but they are back at it now. So, trying to get another pylon down, maybe to replace those cannons, but it is brought shut down very quickly. We do have observers out now for Purple Wave, though, so that is good. And I am still trying to edge scroll from having pin and remaster there. Uh, so we've got more zealot count increasing now for both sides, but the army count is just a lot higher here for tier, and the zealots are just, they're coming in from the left. They are trying to engage instead of just run through the army, which is good to see. Seems to be throwing off tier's micro a little bit. Um, but these probes are just getting decimated here at the natural, and then probes are coming in from the main into the massacre. As Tyr's army splits, so he's left some zealots here to just clean up this natural, while the main army is going over to the left side of the map here to clean up Purple Wave's fourth, which he tried to take while the natural was being destroyed, uh, and the third, so... It looks like it was a good attempt by Purple Wave here to try and get the macro going, but Tyr just hit a very good timing with the having more gateways than Purple Wave had, just being able to get that army up to that critical point where he could push before uh, Purple Wave could see the benefits of this third expansion down here. Very good timing by Tyr. He also took a third and a fourth while all of this was happening that I missed, and while doing cleanup, go ahead and take a fifth. Always good to, well maybe not always, but oftentimes it is good to go ahead and try to take an expansion behind your attack, because your attack will defend your expansion. The natural there is cleaned up. We'll go ahead and speed this up a little bit. As this is looking at this point to be just clean up for your Protoss. And as the final building falls, that will make... Oh, wait. There, building. Um, oh, there is a pylon that was... And it looks like Tyr is indeed coming to... So with that, Tyr is able to even the score one to one with Purple Wave. And we will move on to game three, which will hopefully... Alright, so on to game three. Uh, Purple Wave and Tier Protoss with the score tied up. Here we have game three taking place on Heartbreak Ridge. 
with Purple Wave, the orange Protoss on the left, and Tier Protoss being the white Protoss on the right. Let's see, we've seen Dark Templar play from both, as well as just a general strong macro play off two base by Tier Protoss to break the contain of Purple Wave and get two. So let's see what each one has in store for us. Probably getting the pylon down quick. Up a little bit. Scout coming out for your Protoss. Gateway coming down for both of them. Simulator coming down for Purple Wave. Got two, again, a two gateway opener and a one gate core. They're both bots opening very similar, yet they've both done very different things off of these. Out coming out now for Purple Wave with one Zealot guard getting a second one. Here is pumping Zealots right now, still no gas. Purple Wave looking to take his natural, sees what's going on in Tears base, sees that there's no gas yet. Getting his first Dragoon and tossing down a Citadel of a Dune, going for a Dark Templar rush, not putting down the expansion. So this might actually be, I'm wondering if this is a reaction to seeing the lack of gas and forge from Tyr. And Tyr doesn't have a scout, so he does not know that the Citadel is down. We have the Templar Archives being thrown down in the back of the base. Try and hide that tech. More gateways coming down for Tyr. Uh, Cybercore coming down and gas, but I don't think you're going to get observers out in time, but he has no clue that he's about to get hit with the Dark Templars again. Really should be throwing down a forge Army's coming out to see what's going on. We've got cannon coming down. The Templar is complete. We've got two Dark Templar coming out for Purple Wave here shortly. They are both out and on the field now. Still no detection for tier that I can see. No forge is under construction. Just getting those army units, getting those dragoons out. Three of them are about to pop out. Range is also being upgraded, but I don't know if it's going to be needed here because now the Dark Templar are in. Will tier react? and throw down a forge. These Dark Templar are just eating up the units here, eating up these Dragoons. Probes are trying to do some work on this. Oh, but the Dragoon lives! And we've got more Dark Templar coming in. Purple Wave taking his natural behind this attack. Cleaning up the probes with these Dark Templar. Uh, let's see, do we have a forge? We do have a forge that's about to be completed, but... There's no pylon in range up here. The Dark Templar are moving in. We should probably focus there. We go focus in the forge. These three dragoons are putting in some work against uh, these zealots. 11 kills, 16 kills, 16 kill Dark Templar going in. Still getting more eating up those things. The forge is down. This looks like a quick game three. Yep, and that is game three with Purple Wave coming out two to one. So we had another instance here of, of uh, Tyr just not getting that detection in, uh, in time. And I, I feel like it's a reaction from Purple Wave there, where he's seeing that Tyr doesn't have the gas yet and he's deciding, you know what, I'm not going to expand. I'm going to go for that Dark Templar play because you're not going to have that detection. In time. I'm really excited to see if in game four here, if Tyr Protoss is able to get its macro game going and out macro like in game two. Uh, or will Purple Wave be able to close this one? So, game four. Purple Wave versus Tier Protoss. Current score, Purple Wave 2, Tier Protoss 1. Can Purple Wave close this out, or will Tier Protoss be able to even things up and bring it to a 5? We've again got Heartbreak Ridge here for game four. Purple Wave, now the blue Protoss on the left and tier. The red Protoss on the right. So same positions, same map. Will we see the same thing play out? Or will this go differently? 
Wiltshire learn that it might need detection or gas a little faster. So we've got pylon down, pylon down, exact same positions for the buildings. Uh, gateway, I'm expecting gas. We've got gateway here, uh, here with the quick scout. See if the simulator coming down for purple wave. A little, a little harassed there, but probe's seen enough. It's going home. This is almost looking like it's going to be that same game. We've got second gateway coming down. That first zealot is out. Two zealots under production now. The core is coming out. I'm getting suspicious that this is the thing. Uh, but it's definitely not because they're different colors. So purple wave is going to scout, is putting this out here. Again, is moving the zealots out front. Will we see the exact same reaction? Um, let's see. Did he nail the scout? Citadel is coming down. Let's just see real quick. I take Pierce or Tears uh, vision off. We did not see the gas timing, but it looks like we're still going for the Citadel, because yeah, this is playing out a little different than the last game, so it's definitely not the same game. Um, more than likely he just saw these here. May have seen the Viscan Geyser, but it's hard to tell from the vision. Um, I did not see what happened to that scout that went in, but last time the scout was coming all the way down here, if I remember properly. And now... Uh, don't know, okay. Wanted to wait to get that. Now we've got the two Dark Templar coming out. Here is expanding again. This is playing out almost the exact same way. We've got <laughs> two and two here. This just makes me real suspicious that this game is playing out so similarly to the last. Here come the Dark Templar. We have no detection. Dark Templar coming in, doing some work on the units. Is there a forge? Now a forge is coming down, but again, I just feel like it's going to be too late. Forge is even in the exact same spot. I mean, if you're in the exact same positions, you're doing the exact same plays as an AI, it's not entirely surprising that this is playing out almost the same. Yeah, we've got the things out here doing work. Cleaning up the units here. Coming into the natural, the, the natural expand behind it. Thirteen, twenty-four, twenty-three. 24, 23, Tier Protoss, given the GG, no Nexus. And that was game four with Purple Wave taking it three to one. The last two games playing out almost exactly the same. Uh, so, which really makes me feel like something weird happened there, but as far as I know, the way that it has played out, they rolled the same map, the same start positions, and made the same decisions, uh, and ended up with the same results. So Purple Wave will move on to the next round of the winners, while Tier will drop down to the loop bracket. Get the score screen here real quick for you, and we'll move on to the next or next match. Our next match up here, we have Oxy versus Z ZNZZ Buff, uh, which I might just call ZN for short here. Um, we're on Circuit Breaker. We've got Oxy in the bottom right, and ZN up at the top left here. So Zerg versus Protoss. Cross position circuit breaker. See what we've got going here. Up a little bit here. Like we've got fast expand going on for uh, ZN. Proxy is. I mean, I think that's a nine pool. Or an over. Yeah, that looks like a nine pool. The Overlord pop in there. The proxy has scouted what 
or sorry, ZN has scouted what Proxy is doing. Proxy Overlord scouting it in the wrong direction. Same with the second one, throwing down the cannon. Protect. Got the Zerglings underway, they just popped. Scout is holding them back a little bit. Should probably ignore the Scout and go for some aggression, but at the same time, they're not going to get much. No matter where your opponent is on this map with the long rush distance. A little chase going on here, a little nibble here and there. So now, Foxy knows Yen is not in the bottom left. And he has found Zian with the cannons and still chasing the probe around. In so let's see what we've got going here. Gateway coming down, cannon, got Zergling speed coming down, Proxy. Still chasing, probe around, though its days may not be very long given the Zerg once Zergling speed is done evolving. Overlord moving into position to be able to keep tabs on what's going on with this expansion here. We've got a nice little wall going on with the Zealot plugging up the hole. Uh, let's see what we've got from tier. I record just finishing up second gateway as well. Try and speed things up a little bit here on these beginning phases. So the Zerglings camping out front. That Overlord popped. A little bit of supply blockage for proxy from that, but should be able to place it, getting down the sunken, seeing that army. Uh, but that seems like a little bit premature. That army is not moving out. You have plenty of time to morph those uh, in response to your army being pushed out. But now we have the mutas coming out. Fire having been planted down, I missed. While wow, range is about to complete for ZN. We poke in that front. With the Mutas and the Zerglings, not going to be doing much for you here, but maybe picking off that. Zealot would love to see these Mutalisks, instead of goading these Dragoons, come around this backside. There is a cannon here to protect, but you've still got so much wiggle room here with right here and right here, and the Goons would have to be swamp. But the Mutas easily being repelled by the large Dragoon count here of ZN. Meanwhile, Proxy did take a third over here, uh, but ZN is able to take a third as well. Cleaning up those Zerglings, we've got Cannon, we've got uh, Ground Weapons 1, Flyer Attack 1 being researched, more Mutas on the way, but I think Proxy's going to be in a spot of trouble here, trying to push this attack back. Third is also under pressure as well, discovered by ZN. Uh, Mutalisks are trying to do something here, but Dragoon Count is just too much, although with the Zergling backup, might be able to get some work done. Like he was able to repel this attack, ZN stopped um, reinforcing it in order to take out this third, though. So while the natural was saved, the third was lost for Proxy, which is going to hurt, especially with ZN being up a base now. Generally with Zerg, you're going to want a higher base count or equal base count to your opponent. Uh, especially since your drone count is going to be lower than your opponent's worker uh, probe or SCV count. So we've got large number... Ooh, those Dragoons are just walking into that. Looks like they were trying to focus the uh, Mutalisks there. Walked into those Sunkins. That was a bit of a miscalculation there. That Overlord just kind of went a little too far. Proxy though still very low on supply, very low on minerals and gas, not able to get another expansion out. Meanwhile, ZN taking his fourth, taking his fifth now. It is not looking good for Proxy, but still managing to hold on with these Mutalisks here. The ZN's just not bringing a powerful force all at once to the front, but slowly this is falling. Got the little mutalisk dance here going on. The Sunkins slowly losing their way. ZN bot having a lot more resources than they know what to deal with, but they've got a good two, three, four, five, six, seven gateway count. It one up here in the top left. 
with just so many bases, expanding more behind this, cleaning up this natural. Proxy is trying to get more, but just looks like he's not going to be able to. These mutalisks are rightfully so scared to engage the large dragoon count. These overlords just hanging out watching it. Saying, hey, what's up? Now, going boom. Uh, looks like we've got some, got a, zealot, a couple zealots coming out now. Uh, Archon coming out, but... Wait, was that our, Yeah, okay, there was an Archon being formed there, but now it's just clean up, I think, for cleaning up the main here. Go ahead and hide that unit panel for the moment. And it looks like ZNZZ is taking game one. Pretty exciting matchup there. Uh, we had some good expansion from both sides, and then ZZ, ZNZZ, though, was just able to press the advantage. Uh, with the high dragoon count and proxy deciding to engage the dragoon units instead of harass. Let's go ahead and get on to game two. Game two of ZNZZ bot versus proxy. We have ZN up at the top, his destination, and proxy down at the bottom of it. So currently, ZN is up 1-0. And let's see, was able to just uh, out macro, out expand, uh, and really just throwing your mutas into dragoons generally not a good idea. Let's see, we've got, looks like this is going to be another fast expand. Uh, let's see if I'll go forge or nexus. First, probably forge with the pylon. It's usually the safer play. I haven't scouted yet. Maybe we've got the Overboard, maybe we're going for a quick expansion here. Yep, looks like we're getting a fast expand from Proxy as well, which unfortunately, Ian could have gone Nexus first in this case. I mean, really, you can't know until you scout it. So, still getting a cannon though. He could have got a forge instead, so it looks like that's a bit of a not reacting to what your opponent is doing. There's the forge, but that will put ZN behind a little bit. We'll see if Proxy is able to take advantage of that or not. Here we have the spawning pool going down, uh, and extractor. Oh. Gateway coming down for end with the one cannon though so it's good to see that he's sticking with the one cannon might want to up that count a little bit soon here getting a third expansion from proxy as well almost missed that and the overlord is dancing at the ramp we've got okay a second cannon coming down that's good gas is up now we're getting a lair and a cyber core so it looks like we're going for the mutalisks again uh, would be my best guess and a, another gateway. I would love to see the mutalisks come in and just harass this main with this big wide open area to cover here uh, by the Protoss, but we'll see what Proxy does with them. Got the Zerglings dancing out front, making sure nothing's like, uh, coming to bother him. Got the drone, drone transfer happening here to the third, the second extractor coming down. Up a little bit the Evo Chamber. Oh, we're going for uh, Hydralisk. Okay. Getting that lurker aspect. That overlord is going bye bye with proxy getting apply blocked. Would have been nice to see proxy having an extra overlord, just expecting that overlord to die with where it was. Um, but perhaps it might not have just understood. It might have been trying to keep it like over a cliff or something. Uh, it, and figure, assuming that it would be able to remain alive there. So we've got upgrades finishing here, missile attacks, range. So it looks like this is going to be Hydra play. Uh, looks like we're getting, I don't know if, a no, Lurker Aspect was researched, so I don't think we have Hydra speed or range yet, but it looks like we are getting Missile Attack level 2, I think. I can't find Hydra List on the field to double check. The Spoons are pushing Boxy back, but there is a Lurker in play, and I don't think there's any detection out right now. He's, oh, that was a beautiful surround there by the Zerglings, trapping those goons so they couldn't retreat. Forcing them to just kind of take out what lings they can while the Lurkers eat them up. But I think these Lurkers are just going to be able to contain. But that might be enough, because they're not, I mean, there are only two cannons, so they may be able to push into that, but I don't know if they really want to. 
Uh, but they are definitely pushing back the army of Zian, while Zian is taking a third here. Now, uh, they might want to pull back. That's a pretty good Dragoon count, not good for melee units to try and engage that, but you could, could get a nice arc with the lurkers up here, perhaps, if you could get them in. I mean, the army is kind of hiding back here. You can take some losses, but man, you could take out those probes and shut down that gas mine. But instead, the lurkers are pushing up into the doubles. Here, this third is going undetected for the moment. Trying to push up, but losing a lurker there. These goons are tripping over themselves a little bit here with this tight corridor that was created by this gateway. Oof, and just losing those to the lack of detection. Do we have a we do have a robotics facility and an observatory down, so this observer is under construction. Meanwhile, no further expansions. Would love to see Proxy maybe expand behind this. Um, you know, set up a nice contain, get another fourth base, maybe even a fifth. And just sit back and get ready to just overrun with your swarm. Blues and lurkers to those cannons, not good to be pushing it like that. Really Proxy setting itself up for a really beautiful position here and then just kind of throwing it away by sacking these lurkers. Now the observer is out on play, the lurkers are going to lose their effectiveness here. We do have a couple of hydras out. But yeah, ZN able to move back out onto the field with its dragoons here. Got a couple of sunken colonies, so. Gurglings coming out, Hydralisks. The third by ZN was discovered. Or the third, ZN's third was discovered by proxy here. But we've got a little bit of dancing <laughs> allowing this goon to get a few kills. But now it's getting tapped by the enemies having to back up. But now we've got some fighting happening here at the natural. Uh, not a strong enough army to be able to take it, but doing a little bit of damage. Cleaning up some units, but we've got a significant supply difference here between the two players. So it looks like the map presence right now, very strong for ZN. Uh, Proxy having been fought back to his natural. But this third base, very unguarded, but also undetected at the moment. So still able to get those resources. Uh, ZN now taking a fourth, going for a gas instead of the corner mineral only, or I think that's mineral only. I hit on this map, not what I meant to click on. The entire map real quick. Okay, yeah, that is not back to vision here. Gonna lose that goon. Gonna take some damage to lose that goon with the poking. Mutalisks now coming out for an air attack and still getting missile upgrade. We're kind of doing a tech switch here. I don't know if that's really what you want to do unless you're going to start doing some harass with these units. Try and force that army back and deal with your harassment. But uh, getting cannons up, this is pretty well protected from harass. And there is an angle of attack here uh, that you could do to harass this base. Um, the main getting cannons in the mineral line, that is pretty well protected. But it looks like instead we're going after the dragoons here. Just trying to generally push back. Now the dragoon count is low enough that this will work. But I feel like the end could very quickly just reinforce this if it needed to. Which it does again. Fighting Zian all the way back to his natural. But oh, what is the Muta army trying to use advantage take advantage of the cliff, but going right into the main where there are already more dragoons. Losing the mutalisks just... Oh! Oh, you found... You kind of found where I was talking about where you could maybe harass, but now you're down to three. Four mutalisks. Army for Zia, moving back out, saying, I don't care about this. Doing some damage, though, which is nice to see, but oh, they found the third. They found Proxy's undefended third and are trying to clean that up. So that became their priority. But which is good to see, instead of like the whole army trying to defend against these units here, it's prioritized killing this expansion, which is going to do it a lot better. Because now you've got Proxy down to two bases, you're expanding twice more, you've already got four established bases. Plenty of resources in the bank. 
Archon's out in play now, so the Zerglings and the Mutalisks are going to be even less effective against the main army. Large sunken count, though, here, so that's going to take it a little bit to break, especially if you're keeping your units just fighting on the edge instead of moving them in. But this will go down over time, I feel, especially with the resource advantage that we have going on here. We've got leg upgrade, weapons upgrades, let's see what kind of... We're already at 1-1 one, one here. Yeah, this is now just... Didn't even clean up all of the sunken, so coming back to finish that up. Cleaning up the natural, and then going to clean up the main here. This is looking like another game for ZNBot. Good fight by Proxy in this one there, but just... Rushing in with those lurkers, just, and throwing them away. It had to contain... Uh, could have expanded more, but instead just stuck on three bases, and that leaves it 2-0 in ZN's favor after two games, and on to game three. Game three of ZNZZ bot versus Proxy on Andromeda, with Proxy uh, being the yellow Zerg on the bottom left, and ZN being the red Protoss up in the top left. So far, uh, we've seen different builds from Proxy, uh, but neither of them have ended up working out again. Let's see what we get here in... Looks like we're getting another fast expand from ZN up here. Like we're getting the Forge. We're also not going to scout Proxy. So we're not sure what's going on. Proxy's Overlord is going in the right direction. Looks like we are getting a expand and a scouting drone going out now as well, so wonder if we will see another double expand from Proxy. Zian scouting the third, or the second unoccupied base. And then now we're getting the Nexus. So this is what we saw last time when uh, Zian did see the double expand from Proxy. I'm assuming that that's just general build order for Forge Fast Expand here. Uh, let's see, so we are seeing the uh, spawning pole coming down from Proxy. Looks like, I wonder if we will see an early third at some point. Just scouted, we've got uh, drones transferring, not chasing that, but now we've got Zerglings out, so they will start chasing it. Gateway under construction, a couple of, we've got three cannons this time. Got a drone going down, so. And the Zergling is sitting out. So Proxy knows where Zien is. Zien knows where Proxy is. It's got a new reward on it. So this one's going to be chilling out here. Fiber core coming down. Uh, extractor coming down. That, or two extractors rather coming down for Proxy. Macro hatch happening. So thinking we're seeing some two base play here from Proxy. Yell it out to stand guard. Try and make sure the run by happens. And we've got uh, Droning up and Zergling up. We've got Zergling speed and range researching for the two players. A lair coming down. We've got the Robo facility coming out early, so I wonder if we will see uh, observers quickly this time around. We've got an Evo chamber, so I'm thinking we might see some Hydra play again. I won't know until uh, he throws down his tech building. You have a third coming down now. A little bit of a poke happened there, I believe, in the sounds. Uh, got more gateways. Well, a other gateway. Uh, we've got missile attacks being upgraded, so I do think we are going to see Hydralisk play uh, again this time. Range. We've got the observatory, though, so the lurkers will not be quite as effective in pushing ZN back. We've got quite the Zergling count out here. Trying to see if they can do something, but there's too many cannons and uh, dragoons just throwing some zerglings away. Uh, but seeing what Zian's army looks like out front, uh, we do have a spire instead. So not sure why missile attack is being upgraded. And you could be, if I could get a single zergling selected here, getting maybe the melee attack upgraded instead, but. Zian easily able to handle this. Uh, looks like we are getting the observatory and the observer out. 
Fire should be finishing soon here, so we should see the Neelisks enter the field of play pretty soon. Which basically means that ZN uh, spent money to get this Observer that it did not need right away. Let's see what it's going to do behind that. So clearing out those Zerglings that were sitting out front, gaining map presence. Uh, could expand behind this. Looks like uh, I thought that probe maybe was going to go expand. We're getting some more gateways though. We'll move into the natural. Now really it looks like this army could maybe handle this. Only the two sunkens there. The Mutalists right now afraid to engage, but pretty decent count of eight. Engaging with the Dragoons. The Dragoons trying to do the damage they can. Picking off a few drones. Going after the uh, weaker Mutalists here. Trying to replace those sunkens with creeps or just creating more targets really for those dragons to have to deal with. But the dragons keep pouring in. We've got the third coming down behind this attack for ZN. Yeah, handling it quite well, but I think Proxy Proxy could survive this, but really chasing these dragoons that are well out of the natural while sending drones to the slaughter. Uh, not a good look at all. And Finally cleaning up one of those dragons that was chasing down and now coming back into the main, or sorry, into the natural. Got some more Mutalisks coming in, cleaning up this, but really that was a lot of workers lost there. 16 to 50, 51 to 14 now. Oof, yeah, this is just no, or very few workers in the, uh, only three in the main. Losing that Mutalist count slowly to just steady stream of a couple of Dragoons at a time. Maybe gonna hold this back, but now the end getting his fourth. Economic damage has been done. A whole lot of Mutalisks there now. When there were just a couple before, but really don't have the economy to replace any that you lose. And Muta stacking while against humans, it does help spread out the damage. And spots, they're able to pick out those weaker Mutalisks, as we can see from the uh, pile, and just easily target them down. Here we see even more drones being lost. Really, these drones should probably be pulled back to the main if you're going to be sitting there with your... So this weakest one going down, again, more dragons coming in. Just macro capabilities here uh, of many, many gateways thrown down off of four bases. Proxy's just not going to be handling this. The natural is fallen. ZN is moving up into the main, streaming in more dragoons. And at this point, it is just looking like cleanup. Some dragons up a little bit. Taking down the third, coming back now to the main. And this is looking like the GG for a 3 0 sweep for ZN versus Proxy. But ZN moving on to the next round of the winners and Proxy dropping down to the loser's bracket. So with that, a 3-0 win, we'll be moving on to our next match. For our next matchup, we have, uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing this properly, Xiao Yi, uh, the Teal Terran. And we have Beta Star, the Blue Protoss, for their Gabe One on Python. We've got a Terran vs. Protoss here. Should be pretty exciting. We usually see some big mech plays from Terrans and uh, big death balls from Protoss. So hopefully we will be treated to quite the exciting game here. We're not seeing a wall from Xiao. We've got Pylon. Looks like we are going for a quick expand from Beta Star. The Barracks is going down. I'm going to try oops, and speed things up a little bit here as this <laughs> is dragging along quite a bit here, but the games have just been so exciting I haven't even noticed the time go by. So the players have discovered each other. The factory is down. We're going to have a vulture popping out here soon. Marines in the main doing some, some damage there. That all to you. Go ahead and clear that out real quick here. You can see this action down at the bottom of the map. Vulture coming in. 
of this early rush pressure from Xiao doing some damage. The Dragoon's able to clean this up now, but I believe there has been some worker loss. And the Vultures are backing off a little here. Bring the unit way back up here. And the uh, Vultures coming back in for some harass, grabbing a couple of probes, doing some damage on the Dragoon, but now another backup Dragoon coming in. Meanwhile, we've got an expansion at the natural for Chiao uh, behind this harassment here. Another Marine coming up, killing the probe. Do have a third from Beta Star that I missed happening there. So that is going well. So these probes are actually just trying to transfer, but not able to safely. And Beta is just not recognizing that. Their Beta is pushing this back a little bit with this one goon. It is going to fall. Uh, Would have been nice to see that Zealot and Dragoon come out there and help. That marine is wanting to get into that main again. Meanwhile, we've got tanks done. We've got a science facility. We've got a starport. I think this is the 111 where you get a factory, starport, and science facility? Or is it barracks, factory, and starport? I forget what gives the build its name exactly. But we've got Beta Star safely going off of three bases, getting that observatory. Uh, control tower going down here. Tanks. Chilling in the main instead of being posted up, leaving this front open. Although there is one on the high ground that could siege pretty quickly. Uh, looks like we've got more tanks under construction, some missile turrets. Observer is out, storm coming out, uh, leg enhancements, moon range coming, cloak on the way for wraiths. Beta Star was able to clear its front a little bit, but still those marines just sitting out front, armory way off to the side here. Observer just checking things out a bit, seeing what's going on. And Beta Star now pushing these Marines back once again. Uh, observers over the map, sitting on three bases, getting up quite a bit of uh, back there. I'm wondering what is Chow spending its. So it's got the two wraiths here. Got some scanning going on. Looks like a fourth coming out for Beta Star here. Looks like Xiao is trying to push, trying to mine up a bit, but these goons are cleaning it up just fine. Oh, uh, we've got a cloaked wraith here. There are observers out on the field, but none seem to be coming to alert <laughs> the army of what this wraith is doing. Got more dragoons on the way, vehicle weapons being upgraded. High ground tank is now siege. We've got nice defense here at the natural. Probe transfer getting picked off a little bit by the vultures, but not as bad as it could be. And the army is just hanging around with this wraith just doing some work. Nice. Oh, a bit of a nice sim city here from Beta Star. Getting some more gateways. It, popping up more goons. We've got a medic in the mix there. More upgrades. EMP coming up. Here, most of the army is moving out. These three goons, though, just sitting there. That has me a little worried that maybe something went a little funky with the replay. So I'll make sure that that's not the case. And if you're seeing this, then that was not the case. Now we've got a nice army engagement here. We've got the Templars dropping the storm. There's this whole section of tanks here that was just being ignored. Now they're moving up to it. The goons moving up into the tanks so that that splash damage hits them. Uh, Protoss with reinforcements able to take most of that army out. Most of the tanks and the vultures having to retreat. Don't think I saw any EMP there happen. The uh, observers. So the Protoss has been able to push the fight to the middle of the map slowly towards the Terran. Got a nice minefield there. Uh, behind this, we've got more upgrades. The Terran is expanding. Uh, to a third, while the Protoss is sitting on four bases. Terran does have some mines, making sure Protoss wants to expand that they will see it, uh, although this base is not mined up. Protoss trying to push the fight here, uh, slowly losing some troops. Those three actually might be hanging back because of the wraiths, although now we've got a couple of high Templar sitting. I will have to make sure that everything is okay for this replay.
Put it up a little bit there. Another engagement, just some troops generally running into each other. Both kind of sitting back, getting upgrades. See what kind of upgrades we have on the tanks. Uh, we've got 1-1 one, one, and on the Dragoons. We've got no upgrades currently, so they are just getting chewed up. However, I just missed the Terran did try to take a fourth base and it got wiped out by the pro by the mobile Protoss on while the Terran uh, is sitting back and defending its natural. Now Beta Star coming up to this top left, gonna clear that out. Uh, those Templars did move, so that is good to see. Uh, yep, and the lift, but the Dragoons are there to clean that up. The Terran back down onto two bases, not able to defend the army count. The supply count is drastically different here. Uh, which is what you want to see as a Protoss with that Death Ball moving back to the center of the map. And some of it was looking in, just saying hi, seeing what was going on up here. Uh, but very quickly replaced with a very high uh, gateway count from Beta Star here. Uh, still no upgrades completed just yet. Uh, ground weapons just completing to one. That's nice Templars in here. It looks like there was an attempt at an EMP, but just not enough energy from the Science Vessel. Actually, it might have got one off, and I think it might have tried a second one uh, a little too quickly there. There's some storms going off here. Parrot is pretty nicely contained. Beta Star is expanding now in those empty slots. Chiao is forced to sit back on the two bases. Um, out of resources on the main, actually, just noticing. And the natural here will be running out soon, so it's looking like this is just a battle of attrition at this point. Uh, Beta Stars taking over the map quickly here. It looks like Chow wanted to try and expand there, sees that it's taken, and this SCV is going to try and get home. Meanwhile, we've got some vultures just kind of running around the map, not really able to do much because of the Death Star sitting here. Or Death Ball sitting here, mixed up uh, Star and Ball because of Beta Star's name. Speed this up just a little bit so we get to the next engagement because we basically just got. Uh, Chow trying to expand here again, getting caught. Beta's mo army moving up to that top left. They're gonna take that out. <laughs> Although, we've also got a command center floating in there, maybe to try and expand again there. Maybe that was a fake out. Uh, but it's quickly discovered by Beta in that uh, command center is going to back out while the army returns to the center. Now, with this huge resources here, Beta could just be throwing this army into this natural to try and clear it, but it keeps backing up instead of just and instead of just throwing its army in and resupplying it uh, with all of the gateways that it has it seems to only be going after the uh, third expansion here as it's slowly building up its upgrades it's 212 now uh, which is good to see chow is at 22 but chow is out of resources so it's just a matter of time until beta star decides to uh, start actively engaging with chow's army here we go. And here is the march into the tanks. Which are going to try their best, but just not going to be enough here. We've got some storms come down, also hurting their own units by running into the storms. But with no economy, no resources, uh, except for a year's worth of, a year's worth of gas in 1994. Um, which I think is when Diablo 1 came out, if I'm not mistaken. And maybe the original StarCraft, and that might have been 1995. Uh, looks like now it is just up to you, Beta Star, to clean up the main here so we will make sure that there's no crashing that happens. And that is GG, uh, first game going to Beta Star. So let's quickly move along here to game number two. Game number two, Chao. Uh, Yi vs. Beta Star on Destination with Chao spawning as the Yellow Terran on the top and Beta being the orange Protoss on the bottom. So we saw a pretty standard Protoss vs. Terran last match uh, with Beta just keeping uh, Chao from really keeping its third for very long uh, and then just being able to out macro, although probably could have ended the game a lot sooner. I decided to sit back until it was comfortable enough to march its army into the tanks and win. So we've got again another fast expansion coming out from Beta Star, Chow going for the barracks and the gas here with three workers getting another supply depot. Uh, the scouting probe being chased out by the marine here. 
getting down the factory. We've got the cybernetics core underway. The marine being very aggressive, going ahead and uh, taking some pot shots at some of these probes here, seeing if he can take any of them out. The SCV, meanwhile, is scouting the main that probe, <laughs> and all the way around. Ah, taking the third back there, possibly in response to that marine harassment, but now the Dragoon cleaning up the scout and that aggressive marine, but now we've got a Vulture and a marine coming down, although the Vulture does not have speed it looks like, so yeah, because there's no machine. We're seeing the same build, so we're getting another starport here. Although this is, I think, a little bit different from Beta Star with the quick expansion, mineral only expansion down here in the corner. I'll have to hide some displays to show if any fighting happens down there. And this Dragoon is chasing back some Marines with four kills. Although this probe transfer. Making some pot shots. This might give away that back expansion if they chase into it. And it does! It gets seen by Chiao. We'll see what they do in response. This Dragoon has taken some damage. I'm not going to be able to take those forces out, but there are two Dragoons sitting back at the natural. Uh, getting some more gateways. We see that the Vulture Speed and Stim are being researched. We've got a Wraith out on the field. Another one popping out. We don't have a control tower yet, so no... Uh, no cloak as of yet. We do have a robo bay down, so we'll probably see an observatory pretty soon with the Wraith out. We've got the three Dragoons sitting here to guard this base, two sitting guarding the natural, and some units out in the middle. Right now, neither one is containing the other. The meeting points of the army are just kind of out in the middle of the map. We've got this vulture running around, scouting, making sure everything's on the up and up. No secret base shenanigans going on from Beta Star. Beta Star's army pushing these four marines back. Yeah, I think those four marines don't really want to engage with a whole troop of dragoons. But the wraiths running back home. Looks like they're getting some repairs. That is nice to see. Getting some extra utility out of those Terran mechanical units. We've got more factories coming down. We've got two machine shop. Third one coming down. We've got vehicle upgrades. The marine range. So we're definitely going to continue to see some marine usage here. A storm coming out though, leg enhancements, um, observers coming down as I was thinking we would see medic out on the field. We've got some mines going here. Meanwhile, Chow is sitting on just two bases. Probably could have taken a third, but the Protoss army is pretty large, so if it makes that money investment into that third, it's probably going to get run over by this army, yeah. But that Wraith just very quickly died. Although this Wraith is getting a little bit of a peek around. There are observers out on the field. He's just kind of scouting out everything, just saying, hey, what's up? Meanwhile, the armies are sitting out. With some skirmishes going on, but not a major engagement. We just have vultures and some marines and medics out. Which the Dragoons can pretty handily cover while the tanks are sitting back. It would be nice to see the tanks kind of try and help reinforce this position and maybe help the army slowly push forward. A uh, nice storm there on the vultures. Would be cool to see some storms clearing out some of the mines too maybe, but not generally not needed. We have the science vessel out now, EMP almost done researching. Uh, tanks are now moving up with uh, plus one attack. They may have been waiting for that. Not sure how long ago that finished. Uh, Valks are coming out, not quite sure why, but oh, all that blue group, the uh, Dragoons just getting decimated here because of the choke point by the tanks, so the tanks really using that for advantage. However, now Beta Star is just circumventing the Terran army to go after this expansion that was starting in the back here, but the Terran army is taking that opportunity to just kind of move forward here, but very nice. Uh, engagement there for the Terran. Lost a few tanks though, but now the army is coming back, dealing with the reinforcements, cutting them off, and this Terran army is just getting taken down by the Protoss here. I love the Dragoons hugging the tanks, making sure that, you know, if there's another tank in the area, it is doing splash damage to its own units. 
dragging, I don't know if that was just hugging the tank or dragging that mine, and that was nice to see. Beta Star, looks like they're, looks like Beta Star's main goal is to just keep the Terran from getting its third. It sees the Terran gets a third, it commits to that attack, and otherwise it was happy to sit back and take over the map. As Beta Star does have its fourth up, the one thing that it is struggling with is with these choke points here with the bridges. But it seems to be handling the Terran army relatively well. Um, it is maxed 200-200. So I feel like if it really wanted to, it's got the gateway count, it's got the resources. It could very easily just win this by just A-moving basically into the Terran base and just macroing behind that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit because I have a feeling we're going to be sitting here for a little bit longer uh, until it decides that it wants to attack. Really at this point, I'm not sure what the Terran can do. It is trying to take this back right again. Maybe it should try taking this base instead uh, since it does seem to be kind of defending the center here more. Uh, it's leaving this third base up to just be taken out by the Protoss every time. Our resources are running low, the main is mined out, looks like we're ending up in the uh, same position that we were in last time, where natural is about to mine out, and beta star is just... So that there was the replay crashing in remaster, but we were so far along that I didn't have it have the heart to recast the entire thing in OpenBW since it is so beautiful in so I got the game to approximately where it was when it crashed the, and made sure that it all has played out pretty much the same, well, the same as it was before. So we may just be slightly off from where the crash happened, but we won't have missed anything major. Um, I did notice the supply counts are ever so slightly different, um, but we should be good to proceed from here for the rest of this match. Let me... Just that volume a little bit there. And we'll get uh, the rest of this match underway here between Chow and Beta Star. Uh, I have a feeling this is going to play out very similar to the last one where Chow is just going to. Yeah, uh, just looking at it, Chow is mined out. Long distance mining, but that's not probably going to work out well for it. Although Beta Star is. I mean, while harassing that line a bit with those couple of goons there, the main army is mostly staying back. Uh, intent to just let him have to long distance mine. Though he is sneaking the command center there to the back, losing some troops to the front here, but as soon as that third lands, it gets detected. Beta Star is just in there to clean it up with the whole army, and then it's gonna come back out here again with the army to the center. I have a feeling we're just kind of going to be in a loop of that, although at this point, Val is out of minerals. I don't see any more long distance mining happening, so I think this game... Yeah, here comes the death fight now. A push into the main. And just cleaning up what is left of Chow. Go ahead and make sure that Beta Star does not crash. I do like the goons hugging the structures there so that way more of them can attack at the same time um, to clean up those structures faster. But with that, uh, Beta Star takes game number two, going up 2 0 against Chow. Uh, we'll see if Chow is able to bring it back in game three. And on to game three. Uh, Beta Star and Chow. Unfortunately, this game desyncs in remaster. Uh, I believe it, it's probably something with the APM, APM spam between these two pods, bots. If I could not be tongue tied at the moment, uh, that causes remaster to not like the game. So if this does go to a game four and a game five, I will probably just uh, do these two bots in Open BW as opposed to remaster, which is unfortunate because the games are very beautiful to watch in remaster. So it looks like we have similar starts going on here. Uh, they start throwing down the pylon, Chow in the barracks, 
barracks, barracks, however you want to say it, getting gas, and we've got expansion coming down, gateway, simulator, more workers, we'll go through this opening phase a little bit faster here, I think we're going to see a little bit of the same here, we've got the marine coming back in again, getting some harassment in, Beta Star's base here, along with the SUV scouting around, taking out some of those probes, but being cleaned up by the uh, Dragoon that finished some time in there. I lost a few workers, but overall not bad in the end. Here we have the Vultures coming out. Now we've got the Starport started for Chow right up there, I think. Yep. And the Science Vessel. So we're seeing the exact same builds from these two. We've got the Quick Third again. Uh, looks like we've got Vulture over here. Yep, Scouting out the Third. Dragoon taken on, which falls, but there's enough Dragoons in the back there still to uh, be able to make sure the situation is taken care of. So there's also protected by a couple of goons. Uh, got some fair trading out here, just uh, Marines, Vultures, the Wraiths are now out in play, but they still don't have Cloak. We've got the Robo Bay coming down. Uh, let's see, yep, still no command, uh, control tower. Wraith coming back for repairs. It's on a random scan there. Oh, unhighlight the text. Well, that, okay. We're just going to have some random text, apparently. Uh, let's see. We've got more gateways, cannon, observer coming out. So the control tower is down now, but getting that cloak's not going to do much because the observers are going to be in play now. So a little bit of engagement. Can't do much with like a three. I think it was three raids against five dragons. So Beta Star is able to just sit back. Uh, teching up, getting uh, the Templar Archives, we'll probably be seeing High Templars and Storm again. Very powerful unit and spells. Small army out here in the middle, but Chow's not really doing much behind it. Uh, he is getting another barracks, and it looks like started another factory, yep. But Beta Star is just pumping out units. Um, it's the army right now, 57 to 27. And... Yeah, so, I mean, I guess the Chow in these, in these games is trying to play like an aggressive style, but it's really not having the army and it's not doing anything behind that army in these instances. But there's no third being taken while this engagement's going on, and while, well, yeah, that would, you know, your resources would be going towards a third would mean you'd have less for army, but right now it's floating 600 minerals. Seems like it could spare 400 for an expansion right now, but then again, given what Beta Star seems to do, it really likes to just hang out. Oh wow, these guys are actually doing some work, these uh, wraiths here. Oh, and the observer just kind of suicided into the natural. Oh, here comes an observer to help out. I don't know if observer speed is researched, but a lot going on in the production. Uh, army count is looking strong. 30 dragoons. Seven tanks, but none of them are up at the front that I can see. Ah, they're just coming down now, so it's going for a push now. Okay. I was wondering, with the mix of marines in, is this like a 111 into like a six, a deep six push or something? No, it seems late for that. Um. Yeah, Beta Star does seem to struggle with these three bridges. The Chow can keep the engagement here. Definitely has an advantage, but these vultures really need to be in front of the tanks instead of dancing around behind them. It just leaves those tanks vulnerable. But now, Chow is pushing through the chokes, uh, but that's because he's trying to take this third here, and Beta Star is just devoted to killing that. So I think, like the last game, we're going to see this army march back towards the middle here cut off the reinforcements, uh, and then this attack will probably alter because of that with Xiao. Here come the uh, Zealots. Oh, mine picks one off. Oh, is this Vulture able to get this Templar? He is. Lone Dragoon out there. It looks like Xiao is actually able to handle that pretty well, and is pushing into the choke of it here, trying to take out this natural, um, but Xiao does... Ooh, did not mean to do that. I'll put that there for right now. Uh, Chow does have a fourth though, and is able to build the army to repel this back, it looks like. Um, there's one tank, two tanks coming up, but really need that tank count higher to deal with this Protoss army. 
little dance going on here between <laughs> this Arbiter and Wraith. Looking like a pretty easy exchange. We're up in that production tab again. The child's able to, to hold this force again. It's trying to take the third, but there's two zealots taking it out. I think Beta Star's army is just kind of trying to move out to take that third out. Because, yeah, now the army's coming back in from that task and retaking this location. It seems like it wants to rally its army here until it is ready to take the fight. Nice storm on the mines. Taking out the vultures with the dragoons here. Look at that production tab. Tons of units, getting some cans, getting more gateways, and I'm trying to get another expansion going up, it looks like here. Able to clean up this area, but again, I think. Oh, well, there was a dragoon in the natural there. I might have might actually not know about Oh, wait, just found out about that third. I bet. Yep, dragoon found it. <laughs> so the army's marched in there again, but now. At this point, yeah, Chiao's down to two mineral resources here. Natural's running low, too. Uh, you know, he can't get that third. He keeps trying to take this back base, which he can't defend. And it seems like he's only interested in pushing through to the natural, which is just not helping him right now. Uh, Beta Star is take has taken a fifth, and looks like he's set up to take a sixth, getting pumping out more dragoons. Uh, high unit counts for the Protoss, working off almost max supply. Has more than double the Terran supply at this point. Uh, the main struggle for Beta Star right now is when it tries to push through this middle, but it just keeps pushing up through the side, no problem, because uh, there's no defense here by Chow. I mean, you've got another choke point here that you could use to your advantage, but. He just keeps trying to move forward into this natural uh, and being repelled. He was pretty close on the one push, but there's, he's got so many other targets that he could try to hit. There's you know, this base here, uh, virtually undefended. Uh, if he just set up some tanks here and some units, he'd be able to you know, defend whatever attack he wants to send up this way. But at this point, he's virtually mined out. Um, I suspect, yeah, this is going to be the end of the game here. I even mined out the blocking minerals at this point. I was trying to long distance mine, but it's not going to do it. These SCVs are going to get slaughtered by the Dragoons here. It's all gone. And then it's just left to clean up of the main base for the 3 0 sweep uh, by Beta Star. Nice, strong showing. It's almost like we have a bot that's trying to be too aggressive versus a bot that's very patient uh, and very much has its goal in mind of keeping that third from going up. And that's the game with Beta Star moving on the next round of the winner's bracket and Chow moving down to the loser's bracket. Pretty you know. And on to the final match of the round of 16. Winner's bracket. We have Steam Hammer vs. Iron Bot with Steam Hammer in game one, spawning as the Red Zer uh, against uh, Iron Bot, the Purple Terran. And to be honest, I forgot which map we're on, so I'll go ahead and. <laughs> I think this is Roadrunner. Yeah, this is this should be Roadrunner if I'm not mistaken. And if I am, whoops, sorry about that. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and unreveal the entire map. We're back to the player's visions here. So Ironbot's an old strong classic. Um, Steam Hammer, also an oldie, but uh, has received updates over the years. I don't think Ironbot actually has. Go ahead and speed up. Steam Hammer is also a lot of different bots uh, forked from it. It is a great starting point if you are a new author. Although Howl Pan is actually a fork off of Ironbot, um, but Ironbot's code base was a, is a bit harder to work with um, and not really designed to be forked. So we have, not sure exactly where it looks like this was hatchery first, spawning pool and the uh, extractor from Steamhammer, Ironbot doing the main wall in here, and Steamhammer not able to get the scouting drone in because it went to the wrong base first. 
hitting the two factories behind the wall. Blair is morphing in, getting a sunken colony just to be safe from the vultures, which are now out. Let's see if they try to do any sort of run by, which they could potentially do here. Got some damage, but it looks like they're not. They're gonna play with these zerglings here, take some pot shots where they can, but that one has taken some damage. And we've got the spire coming out, the uh, vulture speed coming down as well, and we have turrets coming down now. Uh, in the main mineral, still no expansion right now for uh, Ironbot. Going with the one base, two factory play here, but not really able to do much at the moment other than contain the Zerg with these vultures and make sure uh, that the Zerg is not up to taking a third somewhere. Got a, another Zergling there, but these Mutas are going to force these vultures to kind of back off a little bit or just die, like they are. Meanwhile, the Mutas are nicely taking some shots on the uh, factories here from a safe distance, although now that that Hurt has finished, they're taking some damage and taking some losses, probably should have backed off, and um, just continue to maybe even try and take out this engineering bay, uh, which is unprotected, but instead deciding to engage with the defenses. Meanwhile, Ironbot is taking its natural uh, for its second base, continuing uh, while Steamhammer is continuing to pump out the Mealisks and also switch over to uh, Hydralisk then, they are being built. Uh, looks like Zergling Speed now is also being researched while we've got the uh, transfer here. Oh, a little bit slower than I was meaning to go there. We're also getting uh, faster Overlord movement for detection. Um, Ironbot is just now macroing up a bit here, getting more SCVs. Uh, Evolution Chamber coming down for... Team Hammer still just sitting on two bases though. Has map control with these uh, Mutalists, but not really taking advantage of it to try and grab more bases at the moment. Uh, which I have a feeling is going to come back to hurt Steam Hammer here. But trying to do some harassment, just kind of dancing and taking shots from uh, the turrets here. I mean, that was nice. Uh, taking out the Academy now. And getting the muscular augments and. More drones, some upgrades happening here. We've got a armory finishing up, a second starport coming down. Now for Ironbot. Mined up some of the areas to know, but not all of them. So Steam Hammer could easily be have expanded out here and here. Um, you've got him pretty far. They're pretty much not able to push out right now with any type of army, except for maybe a couple of vultures. But you get a hatchery down and a sunken, and you can shut that down pretty easily. Uh, some utilists doing some work there. Other ones trying to do some work here, but missing a lot of opportunities to pick some things off. But this is some nice turret placement. Um, really, the workers are well protected. What you could do, though, is maybe pick off like some of the buildings or damage them um, in the base. Bulks are out now, though. And so we will see how they perform. Trying to do some work on the on the, um, on the mutalisks there. We've got third being started for iron while steam hammer is just happy to sit on two bases backing up to a hive getting more macro hatches uh, so that it can spend its money but it's not increasing its income when it had the chance and now ironbot is starting to take the fight back to steam hammer which could spell trouble for him tried with the scourges there not really doing much got a queen but i don't know what it's going to do uh, you can't really do much in this situation here. Uh, vehicle upgrades being researched. Tank siege mode finally being researched. Uh, but this iron basically has the contain now. So Steam Hammer really, it had an opportunity to take a third and just never took advantage of it. Now it's stuck in its natural uh, with this Terran army just picking anything off that tries to come out. And it's trying to do some things with Scourges, but... Look at that dodging there, and then the Scourge is first forced to back off as the uh, Valkyrie gets some cover. Picking off an Overlord, picking off some Zerglings, now the tank's doing some work. 14 kill tank. Uh, this is not looking good for Steam Hammer at this point. Trying to produce some Hydralists and throw them out there, but there's, tank, there's a tank out in play. The Wraiths are taking out the Queen. In the overlords, the gorges are just kind of dancing here back and forth. 
And it looks like Ironbot is going to have this one. He's taking another expansion, building a science facility there, because why not? Overlords are going pop, and the main is being cleaned up now. And Steamhammer has called the GG by leaving the game. So that makes it 1-0 Ironbot after game 1. Steamhammer really had an opportunity there. Um, with its mutalists for keeping Ironbot back, but it just did not take advantage of the map presence that it had given itself with those mutalists. So let's go ahead on to game 2. And game 2 is on Heartbreak Ridge with uh, Steamhammer, the Red Zerg on the left, Ironbot... Blue Terran on the right. The last time we saw Steam Hammer get the map presence and not take advantage of it, will we see the same thing again? Uh, maybe a different build. Let's see here. So, kind of watching here. The Overlord's going out to scout. Ironbot is doing its usual thing of walling in. It looks like we're going to the second Overlord. Having been built, yep, we're going out to get our expansion here. Drone scouting in addition to overload scouting is pretty interesting. Uh, you think you could just do one or the other on a two base map. So that might just be that there's no logic that, hey, this is a two base map. Maybe I shouldn't send my drone in because I know already where the enemy is. But the overlord is backing off now that the drone has seen some buildings. And maybe even that it's used that there is a marine being built. So we have the spawning pole coming down for Steam Hammer. It says two. Oh, okay. There there was a second hatchery that was started. I just wasn't seeing it for a minute there. Factory coming down now for Ironbot as it is safely walled in. There are lings, but uh, this wall is most likely ling tight and so won't, they won't be able to do much. There's nice amount of space for repairs, though letting out a vulture, this poor Zergling just ran right into it. Joined up by its buddies, but then it goes pop. Two strikes from a vulture, vultures of iron are always so deadly. Just follow this vulture around if we wanted to and just watch it kill all the lings, except for the fact that now it's run into its own colony. So Lair is underway for Steam Hammer here. Vulture Speed is underway though for iron, but it's probably not going to do a run by and at this point with the hydralisks it probably would be ill-advised. Ironbot's barracks is floating places uh, probably just out of the way as it's getting another as it's getting actually a bunker up there which is pretty interesting to see getting some defense back in the main and it's also exploring making sure that steam hammer is not trying to take a third anywhere getting a third factory down and an engineering bay uh, let's see steam hammer Getting the Spire, I think this time though it ended up getting the Hydralisks first. Um, and Iron is just sticking with the Vultures for right now, but we are getting the Siege Tank mode researched while the Spire is finishing up. And Iron is mining some of the expansions just to try and keep an eye on them, make sure that Steam Hammer can't take them easily. Out of mind, so you can't do that one. And that overlord goes pop. <laughs> By the four marines, five marines that are there. So, at the moment, uh, Iron has the contain on Steam Hammer pretty well. We got the tank out here now. This is where it's spelled doomed for Steam Hammer before. Can Steam Hammer handle the tank at its front door? Generally, if once Terran has uh, your front sealed off with a tank or two, it's not going to be good. Although that's enough mutilus, so you can do some serious damage if they just focus the tank. Oh, they take out the marines first, which is the only anti-air. Where the tank goes down to the sunken colony, I think is what happened there. And all that's left is some scattering vultures. Uh, Ironbot, meanwhile, setting up uh, its turret ring around its natural, ahead of actually taking the natural. And the vultures are keeping the the, uh, the mutilists here at bay. Just by running around frantically and having the mutilus try to kill them. And now taking the natural. Team Hammer is up in supply and in workers, which is not something you would usually see off of a two base Zerg against a Terran. 
But the turret line is pretty strong, uh, pretty good layout here by Iron. There are still some spots where you could maybe do some picking, but Vlisks can't seem to quite find that. That tank, I don't know why he moved there, but okay. So here we go. Uh, Vultures are engaging with the Hydralisks again. Vlisks just being very indecisive in what they want to do. Picking off a Marine here and there. Little Hydra Dance happening. Now the Hydras are trying to press the advantage here while the Mutalists are keeping most of that army at bay. Iron deciding not to engage does have a tank though so should be able to, if I can protect that tank, handle these Hydralists pretty well. Meanwhile we've got upgrades coming out from, uh, from Steam Hammer. Armor one is about to pop, melee one is about to pop, but there really aren't a lot of melee units out on the field right now. How are the air upgrades looking? We've got uh, Zerg Carapace one, uh, no attack yet for them, but these Hydralists are able to push into this natural. They're taking out SCVs, they're taking out turrets. The Mutalists are now feeling safe to come into this natural. Uh, where are the tanks, though, of, of Iron? He's just not able to keep his tank count, count up. He is taking a third, but with losing the natural, I don't know what that's going to do for him. Trying to load up this bunker. Not looking good. We've got the double Evo chambers here. Upgrading. It looks like I or Steam Hammer rather might be able to take this game and even it out. Trying to push into the main here. We've got an SCV. Uh, SCV's trying to repair this bunker with a lone marine. Don't know how much good that's going to do though. It is doing some work. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, loading and unloading. Three kills on that marine. But the third is discovered. The Mutalists try to take out those turrets, but the SCVs with the repair are able to keep it up. Steam Hammer are trying to expand now <laughs> at Iron's Natural. It is actually expanding this time, so it did take the center at some point. Um, and is taking this bottom middle here and Iron's Natural. So that is good to see uh, that it's actually expanding behind this attacking here. It does have Hive Tech already in the consume for the Filers, so they will be out in play. It's got the Ultralisk then getting their speed upgrade. Um, so this is not looking good for Iron. Uh, looks like Steam Hammer was able to break the contain with those Mutalisks and then was able to take the fight back to Iron and should be cleaning up this fight relatively, relatively soon. Yeah, here come the Lings, the uh, Cracklings as they were. Uh, I think they have the fast attack. Yeah, and now here's the Swarm. These Vultures are desperately desperately trying to save the day, but they're not going to be able to do it. And with that, Ironbot is eliminated, and Steam Hammer was able to come back in this game, make it 1-1. Let's take it into Game 3. And Game 3 of Iron Hot and Steam Hammer is underway. And unfortunately, this is another game that desyncs. So for the rest of this cast, I think I'm going to stick to Open BW. Uh, unfortunately, it does seem that some bots are still pretty triggering to remaster to try and handle. So despite the fancy little opening, <laughs> we are not abandoning Open BW uh, for this tournament. But we do have, uh, we're on Benzene, we've got Ironbot up in the up right here, along with Steam Hammer in the bottom left. We've got uh, Steam Hammer opening up again with uh, walling itself in here, in its main. Steam Hammer again went for the quick hatch. Well, not the quick hatch, but the quick expand with the... Uh, Spawning pool, going ahead and getting its lair. Iron is getting a bunker here. Looks like uh, Steambot, or Steam Hammer, is going for the Hydralis again, along with a Spire, so they can transition into Mutalisks as well. So it looks like we're getting a little bit of game number two in this, so maybe Steam Hammer can pull this out to take the lead from Ironbot. Oh, that was a very nice mine there, taking out all those Hydralists and Zerglings. So Ironbot has a pretty good contain here. Going on, but the Mutalisks are about to pop right as the tank gets there. That's nice timing. Maybe they can deal with this contain again. Just moving in. 
taken out the... The Marines really just ran away from the tank and left it undefended there. Uh, which is pretty unfortunate for that siege tank. But the Mutalisks are pushing back the Vultures at this point now. Bit of a scattered fight here. Uh, the engineering bay for Ironbot is still under construction. So much damage could have been done if these Mutalisks would have just ran straight after Ironbot. Instead, they're deciding to try and clean up these Vultures and Mines. Now, there is a drone coming out here. So, maybe, yep, it looks like he was trying to expand there, but there's a mine in the way. Maybe trying to expand again. Meanwhile, oh, the realists are trying to take out this bunker here, but the SEV's able to repair it in time. Oh, and so the realists uh, cleverly do try to take out some of the SCVs that are repairing, but there's just too many. Making too much damage, now finally backing off a bit there. Looks like there was maybe only one Marine in that, but thanks to the uh, power of the SCVs repairing, that bunker was able to keep its hold into the ground there and not become just a smoldering pile of rubble. So these Beatlisks are still dancing. There's not much I don't think they could do except for taking pot shots maybe at these uh, star ports, as there are the turrets here and here. Ending the mineral line and the building's pretty nicely and there's a nice ring of turrets around the natural here. Going after this bunker again, but uh, able to take it down before the SCVs can get there, but they are repairing that turret. Can they repair it? They aren't able to repair it faster than the uh, Mutalisks can damage, but there are other turrets, so not able to do much with that. They do have some free shots that they could be taking on things, but they're just not. Instead, they wander down to the natural and get scared off by the... Uh, Turrets that are down there, and now we're just kind of picking out those stray Ironbot units that are just wandering out of the base of the Volks now pop, and they are engaging the Mutalisks. Running back for the repairs, and I'm probably going to re-engage with the Mutalisks again. While the Mutalisks do heal, uh, it's not as fast as the SCV repair on those Volks. They're chasing this tank out, or tank back, but one out. Meanwhile, there are the Vultures out front trying to harass these uh, drones that are moving about. Team Hammer did take a third. Um, let's see, Mutalisks and Scourges, oh, and the Scourges take that Valk out. Uh, and this Valk is trying to maybe engage, oh, gets engaged with the Mutas, and then gets chased away by them as well. Getting the third gas, which is good, especially because we are on Hive Tech already, we've got the Defiler mound down. Uh, let's see, order we, we've got plenty of upgrades here for Steam Hammer. Get and consume. Have Burrow. Oak is coming in now for Iron. Uh, let's see, we've got the Queen out in play. Maybe looking for something to spawn Broodling, but I don't think we have spawn Broodling just yet, so maybe it'll Parasite something. SCV's coming down to mine the minerals here. Get that transfer going to the third. So Iron has a pretty safe third from these Mutalisks. what we've got going on here. We've just got some random fighting all throughout the map here, it looks like. Mine some uh, vultures, picking off some zerglings. Here, up, and here are the Mutalisks. The Mutalisks are engaging with the Valkyrie. Their health is slowly going down now. Valkyrie able to do some damage, come back and get repaired, and then come back out to deal some more damage. We do have the swarms coming down now though. But I don't see a large army from Steamhammer, so I don't know if it's going to be able to push all the way, though it is making good advance through the center. Still only on three bases. But I don't know that I can really afford to take a fourth one at this point. It does have some excess money, though, so maybe it could expand, like, up here. Uh, Ironbound's not really getting many troops up there. And the mines that were up here originally are clear. But Iron is now pushing through the center and was able to repel the Zerg. And we've got a game of uh, cat and mouse here with the Scourge and that Valkyrie. But over here with the main armies battling, uh, the Zerg is being pushed. Oh, try to get a plague off. Doesn't look like it plagued anything. Give me now for more energy. Can it get. Oh, it tries to get the swarm off, but it does not save itself. Trying to fight, but it looks like Iron has got the contained back on Steam Hammer. Meanwhile, with that contain, it's taking advantage of it and taking out the third of Steam Hammer. 
kill that economy, keep the Zargon two bases. Third is pushing back this army, but the third is pretty damaged. The drones are gone. The army counts are relatively equal, but generally as Zerg, you want a higher army count than your opponent uh, if you're going to be taking the fight to them. These Needlelisks are causing, wreaking some havoc. It's nice to see. We've got an Ultralisk out, but it's not looking good. Ironbot's taking its fourth. It is taking its fifth base now behind all of this. Uh, so we've got the upgrades. We've got level one upgrades for the Terran and level two upgrades for the Zerg, it looks like, for the most part. But I don't think the Zerg has the macro capabilities or the economy to really be able to push this Terran out of its base. It would need some really good... Oh, there's an Ensnare, which kind of helps again with his uh, vultures, but in the end, Plague probably would have been a better choice there. We do have a Swarm down, though, but it keep, likes to run its units out of the Swarm instead of staying within its protection. I just trying to kind of hover around these two Sunkins that could be a bit more forwardly placed. They'd be helping out, uh, but as it stands right now, they're just kind of chilling there. Maybe drinking a peanut colada or something. Meanwhile, the Volks are just slowly taking out the Dancing Mutalist. We're down to two, we're down to one, we're down to none. Ironbot is also still working on this third with the Wraiths, taking out any drones that are spawning there, and also starting up its sixth base here. While it's got the contain, it's also set up some nice turrets outside that it can fall back to if it needs to. Um, and it looks like there's not much army left for Steam Hammer at this point, down to 18 after that Queen Pops, uh, compared to 56 with Ironbot. So it's not looking good for Steam Hammer at all in this game three. Got some more ensnares coming off. Uh, drones going through the army and then being murdered. But the uh, turrets are creeping closer to the natural here. A lot going on right now. A lot of production, a lot of uh, supply depots coming down. Another armory coming down, another comsat, more goliaths and tanks. Uh, finally joining into the mix here. It looks like this is going to be the uh, end for Steam Hammer. Cannot break the contain. Steam Hammer is just going to, or rather, Iron Bot is going to slowly march into the Steam Hammer natural here. Using those tanks to take out that sunken, and then once the sunken's down, there's nothing left. That's going to be GG for Iron Barring some sort of crash, and Steam Hammer bows out, leaving Iron Bot as victor, 2 to 1, and on to the next game. The game 4 of Steam Hammer vs. Iron Bot. Ironbot spawning as the orange Terran on the left. Uh, Steam Hammer, the red Zerg on the right on Heartbreak Ridge. Steam Hammer going, or sorry, Ironbot going for the wall at the natural this time. Uh, the last game that they played on this map, Ironbot was on the right and Steam Hammer on the left, which may play into where it decided to place its wall. But this will allow Ironbot to perhaps take that natural a little bit more early than in the last game. Now this is the map where Steam Hammer was able to take a game off of Iron Bot, so maybe we'll see the same thing happen here, and we'll be able to tie it up when we get a game five. But let's see, we've got uh, another hatchery coming down. Uh, spawning pool is already built. We've got the extractor coming down for Steam Hammer. Gurglings chasing the scouting SCV of Iron Bot. Getting a pop shot, pot shot, pot shot here and there. Probably gonna take it down at some point. Second factory coming down, so we're doing two, uh, one base, two factory play, but with the wall at the natural. Opening up with the support of the, that wall, up with the support of the vulture to scare the zerglings back. The zerglings are splitting up into two forces of two each. And the vulture is going to push these ones up. Oh, this get one, pushes them back to the sunken, sees the sunken, and so it's just outside of range, trying to see up, oh, and it picks off that zergling in there. Now we've got two more vultures coming in to join it. We've got the hydralisks coming out first while the uh, lair is morphed. So we may see, or so we're seeing again the hydralisk first play, uh, followed up by the needlelisks more than likely. We've got another a third factory coming down before the expansion. Now the, the barracks has been lifted and a bunker is being put down in its place. We do indeed have the spire from Steam Hammer coming down. So it looks like we're going to see the same play, which worked out for uh, Steam Hammer last time on this map. We'll see if it does again. 
It does have nice placement of that sunken colony to keep these vultures at bay. We're getting the mines placed up front. Try and help with the contain. No army being produced really. Oh, there we go. The spire is done, and so the mutalisks are now coming out. And will soon pop. Right again, the timing is like near perfect. Right as that tank is coming up, the mutalisks come out. It's around waiting for them to gather up, and now they're coming after the units, which is all spread out. Nothing protecting the tank, but the tank is being left alone and able to get their shots off. Taking a few units, but have been forced to retreat here, or move slightly and try to siege and die. So, we've again got the same thing here where the mutalisks are working on the vultures. The engineering bay is down there. We've got the turrets starting to come down as Iron Bar takes its second. The game is playing out very similarly to the others. Taking off a lane there. Some general engagements in the middle of the mulisks now coming into the main to engage it. Doing some damage, but the turret layout is pretty good. There's not a lot that can really be picked on right now in that base. Or in the other one, the hydralisks though were trying to make a move, but iron has very good repair work with its SCVs. A uh, good amount of space here for SCVs to be able to just mound on that. All you really need is one uh, marine at that point in it to keep everything nice and happy and safe. And these, these SCVs are at the ready, trying to pop, they do pop the bunker. It was empty in the end. And the Hydralisk is targeting the Earth, but really only need to not dance in that tank range or else they're going to really suffer. Tank movement up next to the turret. The Hydralisks don't want to risk it. We'll take out that marine now. Uh, meanwhile, there's another macro hatch coming down. I think, I don't see it as a, yeah, it's another macro hatch. The queen is out. Do we have hive tech yet? Not, or yes, we do have a hive. But we don't have an ultralux then or defiler yet. We now have a turret in place of the bunker. Kind of set up some mines and give itself a little bit of breathing room here. But... Uh, one uh, link for the cost of two mines there. It is causing some problems with the... Uh, Oh, it is taking a third now, Steam Hammer, up in the top left, which is pretty far from the rest of its bases, so we'll see how that works out for it. But it will be a little bit of a march for Iron Bot to take it out. Oh, and the natural is being overrun! Oh, I missed how that happened, but it was like hanging on a thread. Mutalisk's, uh, Mutalisk count just got really high this game. The Vulks finally popped, but it might be too late. Although they are backing up because of the tank on the, the... At least the ground units are backing up because of the tank on the high ground. Oh, the infected command center. I was wondering, I was staring at it for a minute, like, why is this... Orange and that's red, and then it hit clicked. Oh, that got infested. Oh, there's no more SCVs really in the main. Heartbreak Rage, Steam Hammer, able to bring it on, bring it home for a 2 2 tie up. Going into game 5. Another infection of the command center. No infested Terrans being made there, but well played by Steam Hammer. Just able to keep the pressure up, not let Iron Bot break that contain. Uh, eventually just get the numbers that it needed to mass up and attack, and also get a fourth expansion. And on to game five of Steam Hammer vs. Iron Bot, with Steam Hammer being the teal Zer top left, Iron Bot being the purple proto or sorry, purple Terran on the bottom left, on Empire of the Rising Sun. So it looks like Iron Bot's going for its wall in at its main. And Steam Hammer is again going for the Fast Expand. And on the four-player map, it makes sense to scout with both your Overlord and a Drone. Drone doing the cross scout, not going to see Iron Bot. And then coming across to the left here to find Bot. Does get in with perfect timing, <laughs> as uh, Iron Bot wanted to get a scout out of its own. 
but the drone is subsequently uh, finished off by the SCD. The Ironbot has its uh, body pole getting a macro hatch, now sunken, SCV checking it out, it's destroyed by the sunken, and we've got now the den again and a lair, so it looks like we're seeing the same builds from these two bots once again. The vultures are coming out, but not really much that they can do here in this situation. Pretty good placement of the sunken. Um, can't really get any shots off on the drones, can't really get an effective run by, especially with the hydralisks there. And so, oh, they, are, oh, they do find a spot there, a little corner that's unprotected, uh, where they're able to get some shots off. But now with the hydralisks, oh, and the mines, I thought they were going to be get more of those hydralisks, but they are able to just run back to the safety of those mines should the hydralisks begin to engage. But again, we see right as the tank arrives, the mutalisk pops. Mutalisks are able to handle this push, force it back. Going after those. Meanwhile, the engineering bay is done. The turrets are done as well, but there is some opening. Oh, wait, that was a turret. It gets taken down. The Mutalisks, they're doing some work. Can they take off? They can take off that turret. Oh, and they're forced to back off. But there is space where they can do damage if they just stick in there and take out the turret that's being constructed. But instead they run away. There are two Goliaths there though, so they would take some damage from that. Ironbot's getting a second turret up there to defend itself. Meanwhile, Steamhammer is staying on two bases, trying to clean up some vultures uh, that are outside of its base while it has some more of its own mutas just dancing out there. Uh, another... Nope, uh, I thought I saw another tank coming up, but nope, it's just vultures. Which are trying to push the units in there, but they can't really do anything against these mutalisks that are just slowly dealing off damage to take them out. The SCV faithfully trying to repair them, but the S uh, getting now taken out by the mutalisks themselves. And also the vultures having to constantly run away from the mutalisks, they weren't really able to get repaired. Now the base is pretty well defended from mutalisks at this point. Don't think they're at a critical mass yet. Oh, but they are able to take down the one turret. Can they take down this turret? Yes, they can. But I was wrong. Maybe they are at that mass, but they just have to stay away from the rest of the anti-air in the base. Deal as much damage as they can. Taking out the turrets before they can be built. Uh, this is pretty effective harassment here with the Mutalist. Even though you're not doing as much economic damage, it's constant by right, taking out workers. Uh, just constantly taking out some structures here and there, forcing them to have to be rebuilt. Ironbot is still just on the one base. Backing off again, but there's not much that can be done there. I mean, there are five Goliaths. They're going to try and take out that... Oh, decide not to. Take out that one under construction. Taking some shots off on the Goliaths. Take one down. Very effective Muta harass here. Tank goes down. The Mutalisks... Are they going to engage? There are two, three turrets, and a, oh, they take down the one turret and then back off a bit. This is not looking good for Ironbot at all. Meanwhile, back behind the scenes, there's some play going on here with a vulture. Uh, we've got hive. We've got macro hatches being thrown down. Don't have any hive tech yet, but these beetlesks cleaning up the main now of Ironbot. And they just had a really good angle of attack and were with the two turrets that were trying to be placed up here, and now it's just clean up. And with that, Steam Hammer is able to move on in the winner's bracket, 3-2 against Iron Bot, into the round of eight. And with that, we've completed round one of the winner's bracket of the round of 16. Then so taking a look at the brackets here, we had Locutus and Microwave move on to face each other in round two. Alpon and Banana Brain move on to face each other as well. Purple Wave and Z and ZZ Bot will face each other, and Beta Star and Steam Hammer will meet in the next round. Uh, in the losers round one, we'll have the Reaver against Dragon, Mad Mix P against Killer Bot, Pure Protoss against Proxy, and Xiao Yi against Iron Bot. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.